Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Edge Cut tool. I'm going to go over a few different examples, a way you can use the Edge Cut tool in order to quickly develop some geometry. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the model layout. So I'm going to go up to here and choose model. And we're going to start off first with is using a plane. So I'm going to go to plane and I'm going to bring up lines. So NB on your keyboard. Let's bring this down to a more manageable geometry. So I'm just going to go to five for width segments and five for height segments. And I'm going to make editable or C on your keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge cut and you can do that by first you need to be only in edge mode. It only works in edge mode. And we'll go down to here to this icon where it says edge cut. You can also go to MF on your keyboard. Now in order to make an edge cut, you'll need a selection. So I'm going to go to UB, which is ring selection. I'm going to select these, this row and MF for edge cut. And you're going to see a few options. You have offset, scale, and subdivision. We're going to turn off n-gons or create n-gons. And I'm going to put in two subdivisions. And then click and you'll be able to add in these edges. Now you can still use your uh, interactively use the edge cut in order to adjust scale and offset. I'm going to go back to 50%. And I'm going to bring the scale up a little bit. And it's really useful if you want to add in, say, uh, let me go to polygon mode. And I'm going to select this strip of polygons. I can pull this down and you can see we now have a trench or you can pull it upwards and now what I'll do is add in you can see if I go back to edge mode our selection is still selected and I'm going to go back to MF And I'm going to choose, uh, say, let's try, um, let's keep it at two and just click. And you can see that we added in some more lines. I'm going to go to UL for loop selection. I'm going to go to polygon mode. And I'm going to cho choose this polygon, this one, and this one on the side. D for extrude, and I'm going to extrude this out. And you can see how quickly, by using the edge cut, you can add in some lines and start making some geometry pretty quickly. So at this point, you can um, go to the bend deformer, drag the bend deformer underneath the plane, and then fit to parent. And then we'll go to unlimited for mode. Now, if you notice, if I add the strength, this is not exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate or bend the former. Hold down shift for 10 degree increments to get to 90 degrees. Let's go back to our bend the former and fit the parent. And if I adjust the strength, you can see we, we can bend this into a circular geometry. And I'm going to go to 360 degrees. Now you can see now we have very quickly, you just using the edge cut and a few simple uh, modifiers such as the deformer, we can create some pretty interesting geometry. And then I can even put this into a subdivision. So I can go to subdivision surface, 
put our plane and bend the former underneath and now we can smooth this off. Now you'll notice we get this weird kind of effect here at the top. And that's because this geometry isn't connected. So what you can do is you can select, let me just pull this out of the, um, out of our subdivision surface. And if I select our bend deformer and our plane and go to uh, current state object. Oops, wait a minute. Try that again. Current state object. And then if I close this, or uh, shut this down, you can see I have my plane. And if I put it with back into our subdivision surface, you're gonna see that it's still not exactly what I want. And the reason for that is, is this these points aren't actually connected. So I'm gonna turn off the subdivision surface, go to point mode, and I'm gonna select these points. You can see if I move them away, they're still not connected. So what I'm gonna do is put our plane into a connect object. Pull this out of the subdivision surface for a second. And I'm gonna put this back in the sub D, turn that back on. And we have this tolerance that we can adjust for our sub, uh, excuse me, for our connect object. And if we just keep going upward, in our subdivision, you can see that we can get to our amount that we want that connects all our points. Now, if I go back to my plane and I turn off my subdivision surface, the best way to do this is to make the connect editable. So make that editable. And I'll turn off our subdivision surface. Now we have some uh, geometry that we want. It's a little bit different than what we had from before. And that's because of the uh, adding in the tolerance for the connect. But what you can do is go back to your subdivision surface We'll go back to lines and we'll go to UL. And we can bevel. Let me just make sure this is correct. So MS on your keyboard can bevel this out and getting in a more tighter edge And you can also do this with the other lines that you made. Maybe here. Turn off subdivision surface so I can get a better read. MS, and let me turn on subdivision surface. And you can see that we can tighten up these some of these areas. So that's one way we can use the edge cut. And let me uh, save this. So I'm going to put this into a null. So another way we can use it is use in the cylinder. So we can go to cylinder. And I'm gonna make this editable. I'm gonna to go to our UB for ring selection. And I'll go to MF for edge cut. Now I'm gonna try something like maybe six or seven Make sure Ngons is off and just click anywhere to apply those lines. 
And now what I can do is if I go to UL and deselect, and I'll select these lines, or excuse me, actually I'm gonna to go to polygon mode and select each one alternating between each of these lines. And now I can extrude, oops, excuse me. And what you can do is you can add in, um, if I go to line mode, I can select these loops here. Actually, let me go back to polygon mode and I'll go to extrude inner. Pull these out just a little bit. And if I go to subdivision surface, I can pull this cylinder in and let me go to our model mode and I'll turn off lines and A on your keyboard. And you can see we can quickly add in sort of a, a dagger handle or a sword handle. And now let's make a one more example using edge cut and I'll use a sphere and I'll go to NB for lines. I'm gonna make this editable. I'm gonna to go to edge, edge mode, UL, or excuse me, um, UB for ring selection. And I'm gonna to go to MF for edge cut. And let's try say five for subdivisions. Create Angons off. And now let me go to polygon mode, UL. Select these loops. And I'm gonna pull these down. And I can go to UK to shrink selection. And I can pull these back up. And now if I go to subdivision surface, you can see that we have a pretty interesting effect. It could be an eye or uh, some other feature that you wanna use for a sphere. And we can do the same thing that we did before. We can then go to line mode. I'll go to UL. And let me turn off subdivision surface for a moment. And I can select these, uh, these edges. I'll go to MS to bevel. And maybe I wanna put in one subdivision. And if you go to subdivision surface again, you can kind of see how that kind of inlays and you get a sharper edge around that uh, around that bottom. And you can also add that to the top if you want. And I'm gonna rotate around, choose this line and you can do the same thing MS the same uh, options selected. And turn subdivision surface on, we'll go back to model mode and you can see that we have sort of a hard surface effect on this as well. Although we do have this gross pole at the top, we can fix, we could fix that by changing that to quads instead of having all these triangles but you can see how quickly you can make geometry just using the edge cut tool. I put a link in the description to download project files. 
You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.